Welcome. In the previous lecture, we talked about authentication methods and the types of the authentication for a different businesses. Now, in this lecture, we will talk about applications. As an IT employee, here either we develop applications or maybe we support the applications. That way, we help people's life and we make them easier way to um, run their life. Or we generate revenue and most of the time we are developing and supporting these applications. The great news is that Azure has given all of the tools necessary to integrate into your own custom applications uh, with an identity provider that being Microsoft Azure Active Directory so that you don't uh, need to manage any additional set of identity servers for every application or multiple applications that you're going to deploy within Microsoft Azure Cloud. In legacy world, when it's a legacy world, when you have only Windows Active Directory environment operated to that, you used to use multiple identity servers to manage different applications so that end users will use uh, multiple identity usernames and passwords to validate their access level. But when we move to the cloud uh, native applications, uh, we as the end users simply use a single user account that grants the permissions regardless of any required objects, not limited to the applications or maybe not just limited to the user logons. So let's talk a little bit more about applications in Microsoft Azure 80 and we can deploy line of business applications to integrate with Microsoft Identity Platform to provide secure sign-in and authorization for our services. Users can use existing AD credentials to access these applications, so no more secondary logons. So Microsoft Identity Provider provides the OAuth 2.0 authorization so now this uh, allows third party applications to access web hosting resources on behalf of uh, logged on user. When I say the resources, uh, it can be a set of permissions that could be used to divide the functionality of these resources into smaller uh, chunks. These are called scopes and as well as uh, we're going to discuss these things la later point within this same lesson and also uh, users and application permissions are used together with scope to maintain the fine uh, grain control of uh, resources what as well as a safeguarding third-party APIs exposure so let's take one of the example as one of the HR application and try to know access. So what would happen is if uh, end user opens this HR application, he tried to access. So definitely it goes to Azure AD tenant and this uh, this would actually give some kind of you know, control back and it will be used some kind of secret keys and all that. Then the application will be uh, visible or granted access for the end user. So just, you know, we will uh, follow the same thing, but in detail, what would happen? Um, I'm going to you know, explain here. So when a user signs in through the application and the Microsoft identity platform here grants an identity token, if you see here, uh, to this application, and then the app requests an acquiring an access token, uh, that would be a specific token to the identity provider and then they are able to get the HTTP once they submitted this token then actually they are going to submit the HTTP gate or access token specific information uh, along with the APIs such as Microsoft Graph API uh, to access the Azure AD and other access information that would be you know, sent back to the application. So before we discuss scopes and other permissions, let's uh, let's uh, run with some kind of a you know, demo. Uh, but this is the just the background information. Just I wanted to you know come back to this uh, in the upcoming uh, lecture or within this lecture for SBA. And for now, uh, I wanted to you know go back to the Microsoft Azure portal and let's register. So. To register, what we will be doing is we would be you know, going to the Microsoft Azure Active Directory and uh, 
under app registrations you can actually register any of the application here so what exactly this application so whatever the application you are trying to develop that definitely requires a username and password to run that application in the background right so we don't want to maintain the username and password additional username and password when our uh, tenants or when we grant that specific permissions we don't want users to enter so instead what we do is we actually create here a new application specific access information and we give that information back to our developers so the developers will uh, use that information uh, like a private key or whatever the keys information secret keys and then that way of the application inside that the, it has those access so when the application runs that uh, code it would actually open pens and contacts the Microsoft Azure Active Directory and it will be validated whether we have any registration and then it treats as the enterprise application or whatever the legacy application or maybe a line of business application and then it would be open for the end users so uh, without wasting any more time we can click on new registration to create a new application and give you the name of the application uh, which you are gonna deploy so I'm just giving HR app and you can read these three different radio buttons uh, for scoping this uh, supported account type so if you see here the first one would be the accounts within your Azure Active Directory only that means within your uh, tenant so we talked about the tenants in the previous lectures uh, tenant is your Active Directory name or that's on Microsoft.com so in our case it, this is a directory that's uh, our tenant like bpavan 26 hotmail dot on Microsoft.com is our tenant ID so within that what of the user accounts are there for them this application can work that means it can be granted the access or if you choose a multi-tenant uh, multiple tenants can be you no know, granted access and if you choose this you are actually allowing even the Skype or Xbox or any other SaaS based applications or any other uh, identity management also you are actually allowing the allowing to your, your opening to access them so you're granting the access for them so users can you know access so this is how you know you just need to choose so in my case I'm choosing the last one or last radio button so anybody can almost you know use which is within tenant and also multi-tenant as well as a personal Microsoft accounts like Skype or Xbox and other things so I'll just you know click on register these are the optional things like the uh, redirect URA but some of the applications when you're trying to create you might have to give a specific things that you might have to follow but in our case it's the default so if you see here client ID has been a unique ID which has been created and this is our tenant ID which is nothing but if I just uh, show you here this is our tenant ID which is ending with 46 and starting with 75 uh, so here you know 75 and ending with 46 that's my tenant ID that's a unique again so that's how you can you know simply create it but before we jump into anything further so if you have any question like maybe who can create this business applications or maybe application registration so by default any of the Azure Active Directory user can create so that's the hard setting um, to be frank with you so what I'm gonna do is I wanted to change that option so that uh, we can allow only uh, global admin so that you know you're limiting and you will have the full control so let me show you that you know you just have to go to Azure Active Directory and then under user settings uh, if you see here here this option will you know talk about users can register application by choosing yes anybody can register any kind of you know, application so that way you are losing the control so you don't have every user as the developer definitely so you can you know request them with the change management and other process and that way you can you know secure it so I'm not uh, gonna open for everybody that's I don't recommend so I'll just save that configuration so let's talk about the scopes. Scopes are the permissions used to define what actions 
a application can perform on behalf of the user against a resource. So scopes allows uh, for the fine grained control over their data and how that specific API functions is exposed. A third party app uh, can request these uh, permissions from the users and administrators uh, who must approve it the request before the application can access the data or act on the users on behalf so scopes are configured in the app registrations definitely within this um, configuration we would be you know, configuring the scopes uh, but we need to understand a little bit more why would we do this well we would be using it for application permissions that do not require a specific logged on users to access so these permissions that we are granting the applications to control over a set of resources however the majority of the permission scopes are referenced in a specific application code and then the permissions are requested via the application sign-in process to the Microsoft identity uh, provider as we can see here uh, we are referencing to uh, following scopes of permissions uh, within the Microsoft Azure API to, to summarize the specific to scopes uh, scopes are collection of permissions so we have got permissions for users permissions for apps so many permissions uh, we have to keep a track of it so I know that it, it could be a little bit frustrating for you but while scoping or or the scopes are technically permissions we can set use the term in the more uh, conventional way as well so permissions defined what a user app can access directly in Microsoft Azure Cloud and those roles are based on the role-based access control to determine privileges uh, to resources in both within the directory and the Azure themselves. So a user may have privileges to write the global directory but defined scopes of permissions for an application may only require read permissions. So what happens? Well if you see here it has just the read permission so what happens is well the user will be only able to add the application read permission so this is due to the concept of effective permissions and uh, for the delegated permissions uh, which are permissions that are granted on behalf of a specific user to effective permissions of that specific app will be the least privileged between the delegated permissions granted to that specific app via consent so it would be a consent um, option uh, would come up and then the privileges of that uh, currently signed in user will get it now for application permissions which are required that we can assign here to the app those are the effective permissions for the application itself and those are full level of uh, permissions granting to the app and again these are used by the apps that run without a signed in user like a system process or a specific service account so w once our application makes a request of a certain set of permissions on behalf of its user we have to trust that the user is going to allow those permissions to take place so as a next step I can show you here uh, for the configuration of the permission specific like you know you see here these are the user consents like user uh, for the user these kind of you know, notification when he's trying to sign in it will be asking or it will be you know, showing very clearly hey I'm gonna you know read your read and write these files and read your calendar information uh, and you know you can also see that you know the URL which is gonna you know redirect if they have supplied for the optional specific URL sign in and read your complete profile so these are the user consent and this information will be shown so I just you know Google are being to show you that information now let's go back to the uh, this uh, permission specific so we talked about the permissions now when we configure here more permissions for the admin grant uh, consent for the default directory it's gonna actually configure uh, in a new blade uh, or within this blade you can see here grander for the default directory and now if I just you know select it you know it will show me uh, what the admin specific contents has been you no know? it's gonna deploy and now if I click on add a specific um, 
permissions like you know I can um, select this uh, with the Microsoft graph specific uh, API or maybe other APIs which are available directly from the uh, within your uh, Microsoft APIs and if you are looking for APIs within your my organization you can choose other tab or your apps also so for now we can you know select any of these app uh, for example I can select here Microsoft graph as the one of the application once I selected that I would be you know, getting here two options one is a delegated permission other one is a, your application so when I click on um, application permissions I can see here uh, more detailed access uh, level permission let's say access review read all I wanted to you know configure maybe these specific things knows to the developer what kind of you know access to be you know, granted for this application he knows so that he would be you know, taking the right permissions or he would request you to you know configure the right permissions as admin as a global admin you can you know configure that or maybe you know if it is granted permissions uh, for the developers they would actually configure uh, as per the requirement once they have done that you know click on add permissions so that way it will actually show you the admin consequent uh, specific permissions so you can see here admin consent is required equivalent yes is granted now and you can see here the uh, this is you know Microsoft graph that was you know clearly mentioned and now uh, we can uh, look at here the permissions has been granted now I wanted to talk here in the certificates parts also you see here if your application has some kind of you know, certificates that would actually upload here that set the specific certificate so that your client application will have another client certificate that uh, would you know verified here uh, for the authentication purpose that way it works similarly you can also configure your client secret that's a kind of a you know, password uh, to prove that you're actually requesting a token and that would actually communicate uh, client and server specific application configuration and coming back to the role based uh, uh, access you can you know configure explicitly configuration for example to just to read only properties for a single sign on all that can be you know, configured here so these permissions uh, are more about the how you want to restrict for your developers or in terms of the application and if you see here uh, this is where actually uh, we are gonna actually you know setting up the uh, in the next demo which I'm gonna you know uh, cover so this is where you are actually configuring your specific uh, application type like you know .NET or maybe uh, other specific things and then you would you know uh, configure uh, specific to that uh, code and then you would be actually uh, performing that client uh, specific permissions so within this API permission so I'm gonna demonstrate that uh, in fact you know that's the direct Microsoft demo uh, video I wanted to show you so that it's easy uh, and it's uh, configured it is properly demonstrated so I hope that will uh, make you know more understanding about this entire concept that what we have discussed now thank you for watching this I hope this is useful for you